بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا أما بعد. So we started obviously the second juz. Inshallah, we'll be finishing up the second juz today, and the beginning of the uh, second juz it deals with the change of qibla. It deals with the change of qibla. So for the first two and a half pages, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions that He has changed in the qibla from Jerusalem to uh, Mecca, and uh, at that time when this verse was revealed, there was a bit of a crisis amongst the Muslims and amongst the non-Muslims of the community. So the non-Muslims, many of them said, what type of religion is this that you change? One day you're facing this way, the next day you're facing that way. Because the Qibla in Medina was a 180 degree change. Jerusalem was due north and Mecca was due south. So there was a type of, uh, if you like, calamity, was a type of smear that the non-Muslims, and in particular one group of the Yahud, they said, what type of religion is this? One day they're facing this way, the next day they're facing that way. Can't they make up their minds? And then of course in their religion, they had to face east when they pray. And so this added another point, that this is not the correct religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed two and a half pages, and then the last verse about this whole topic is going to be our uh, khatira today, which is verse 177. And in verse 177, Allah says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Righteousness, bir, righteousness is not defined as praying towards the east or to the west. It doesn't matter what direction you pray. That's not how you judge religiosity. Because for the other group, religiosity was all about following the letter of the law. And they forgot about the spirit of the law. They forgot about the khushur. They forgot about the taqwa. And it all came down to following exactly what the letter was. Without thinking about the goal, the maqsood, the spirituality. So Allah says it doesn't matter which direction you face. That's not what really taqwa is. And look at the world around us. Some Muslims on one side of the world are facing Mecca and the exact opposite, they're facing Mecca from the other side because Mecca is the center. It doesn't matter the direction of the compass. What matters, Allah says. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْ تُوَلُّوَجُهُ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Doesn't matter which direction. وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ But what is righteousness? What is good righteousness? Then Allah describes what makes a good Muslim, what makes a good muttaqi, what makes a good person who believes in Allah and the last day. So we will discuss the characteristics that are mentioned in this verse that describe the righteous believer. Allah says, don't concentrate on the direction. Concentrate on, then begins a long list. And this verse is divided into four categories, okay? So righteousness is divided into four broad categories. The first category is proper belief. This is proper belief. Five things are mentioned. And these five are the common five pillars of Iman minus Qadr. There are six pillars of Iman. This verse lists five of them. So to be a good person, you have to have good belief. And this is a standard point of our religion. You must believe in Allah. You must believe in the angels. You must believe in the day of judgment. You must believe in the prophets. You must believe in the books. Now, why is belief so important? Because belief is the philosophy upon which we base our actions. I repeat, belief is the philosophy upon which we base our actions. If we don't believe in properly, then our actions will be improper. If we don't have the proper theology, if we don't have the proper religion of what, of who created us and why we're here, then our actions will also not be proper. Conversely, if our iman is correct, then our amal will also be correct. So belief is the spiritual DNA. We have to make sure the internal wiring is correct, then the external circuits will run properly. If we don't have the wiring correct, then we're not going to be able to function properly. And that is why, look around you, everybody acts in accordance with his or her belief. So those who are passionate about a particular belief, their lifestyles reflect that passion. There are so many examples. So those people who believe, for example, in veganism or vegetarianism, right? As a matter of philosophy, they will change their cuisine. They will change their entire etiquettes of eating and drinking because they have a philosophy of living. Because they have a certain theological, because it is theological, a certain theological principle that they believe in so strongly that it affects their life. It affects their actions. Similarly, we have our own iman. 
So if that iman is correct, then the actions will be correct. And therefore, believing in Allah brings about stability. Believing in the Day of Judgment, accountability. Believing in the Malaika, you're conscious there are angels writing down. Believing in the books and the prophets, you realize Allah sent a code for us to live by. He didn't just create us and let us be. So each one of these points of beliefs, it brings about a change in action, a philosophy of living. Now question, why didn't Allah mention Qadr in this series of verses? In this verse? Because Qadr we believe is also in the six pillars of Iman And of course Qadr is mentioned in hundreds of other uh, verses Inna kulla shayin khalaqnahu bi Qadr We have created everything according to Qadr But this verse, and this is actually a common phenomenon In a number of verses Allah lists the five pillars of Iman And He doesn't list the six which is Qadr as a series Including in the last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah If you look at the last two verses Qadr is not mentioned explicitly But you find the other pillars Why is this? Because Qadr is in fact incorporated in belief in Allah. Belief in Allah entails belief in Allah's knowledge and belief in Allah's power. And Qadr is all about Allah's knowledge and Allah's power. So true belief in Allah in fact incorporates belief in Qadr. So in some verses it is not mentioned as a sixth. And in other verses Allah explicitly mentions Qadr. And of course in the hadith of Jibreel, the six are mentioned. So this is the first of the four. I said... Bir is defined in the Quran to be of four things. The first, right belief. Okay? Now we move on to the second. And the second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that after you have the right belief, This is correct rituals. So after correct belief, number two, correct rituals. And in terms of correct rituals, Allah mentions three things. And once again, it's a partial list. The first of them, he gives freely of his money, despite the fact he loves his money. So you want to achieve righteousness, you want Allah to love you, you want to be a good person, you had better give your money freely. Yes, you love money. It's not haram to love money. It's human nature to love money. al mala. Everybody loves money. It's ingrained in us. But because we love Allah more than we love our money, what do we do? We give money for the sake of Allah. Ala hubbihi. He loves money. Allah affirms the righteous person can love money. But the righteous person loves Allah more. So what does he do? المال, he gives his money. To whom? Then there is a list in this verse of five categories. The first is the will qurba, relatives. And it's interesting, relatives comes before orphans and the poor people and the uh, people who beg. So the first category that you should take care of is your relatives. Your immediate family is of course fard upon you to take care of. Your wife and children, this is fard. Then your cousins and uncles and aunts and relatives, it's not fard. But before you give to a stranger, give to your family members. Your sister's in distress, your cousin is in a debt, you have to take care of them before you go give to strangers. Even the orphan comes number two. Your family comes first, then number two is the orphan. Well, yatama. And then... Uh, uh, the poor people and then the travelers and in those days if you traveled you didn't have access to ATM or bank account you could be a millionaire at home by the time you get to your country or your destination sorry you've been robbed or something's happened you could be poor so there was no access to bank accounts so Ibn al-Sabil is a category some by the way have said Ibn al-Sabil includes guests because they are your Ibn al-Sabil. They're in your house as a traveler. So some have said, Ikram al or being generous to guests, comes under this verse, Wabn al-Sabil. And Allah says, Wasailina wa fir riqab. Those who are asking, they have a right as well. The beggars on the street, you find them on the street begging. These have a right, Allah says in the Quran. As-sail, wa fir riqab. And those who are in chains, who are in chains, prisoners of war and slaves. And Islam has come to free these people. You give your charity to these people. So the second category is rituals. And rituals mentions three things underneath it. The first of these three, I hope you're following me, right? This is the second category. Two A, B, C. There was one A, B, C, D, E. Now you have two A, B, C. Two A is charity. Two B, wa iqamu salah. Establishing the salah. Two C, wa ita'u zakah. Giving zakah. Now, this is interesting. 2A and 2C both deal with money. But 2A is nafil sadaqah. 2C is fard zakat. 
So the righteous person goes above and beyond what is required when it comes to money. Money is of the greatest indications that you love Allah because money is dear and precious. So when you give of your money, when you're generous of your money, Allah says that is ultimate righteousness. As well, Allah mentions salah and zakah and He doesn't mention fasting, He doesn't mention hajj even though they are a part of the arkan of Islam. And this is very common in the Quran. To link between praying and zakat is in over 50 verses. And Allah never mentions praying and zakat and psalm and hajj in one verse. It's never linked together in the entire Quran. Why? Because fasting and hajj cannot be monitored by other people. They're between you and Allah. But prayer and zakat can be monitored. And an ideal khilafah would be monitoring this. Like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq when they didn't pay zakat. But you cannot monitor if somebody's fasting or not. That's a private thing between you and Allah. You cannot monitor who goes for hajj, who doesn't go for hajj. Hajj is not even obligatory if you cannot afford it. So by mentioning salah and zakah, automatically it's included the other pillars of Islam, which is what? Fasting and going for hajj. As well, human nature, the one who perfects his salah will automatically perfect the zakah and the fasting and the hajj. Whereas the opposite is not true. Have you ever heard of a Muslim who regularly prays five times a day and yet when Ramadan comes he's lazy and he doesn't fast for no excuse? That doesn't happen. But the converse is true. How many of us, unfortunately some of us here as well, we're fasting Ramadan but we haven't perfected the five salawats, right? So Allah mentions perfecting the salah because whoever perfects the salah, automatically the other pillars are included in that. It is impossible to be regular five daily salawat throughout the year, and then you become lazy when it comes to hajj, when it comes to fasting. So Allah mentions in terms of rituals. You want to be a good Muslim? Number one, proper belief. Number two, proper rituals. Then number three, Allah mentions that, وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَاهَدُوا they fulfill their covenants and their promises when they make promises with people. This goes back to the third category of righteousness and that is good akhlaq, good manners, mu'amala with other people. How do you interact with other people? So Allah mentions the most important mu'amala that everybody judges everybody else by. Do you live up to your word? Are you honest? Are you honest when you make a promise? When you say you're going to be on time? When you make any type of treaty or covenant, do you live up to that? And by indicating honesty, all other akhlaq are included. Because the most important characteristic when we come to dealing with each other is what? It's honesty. We will never forgive a dishonest, cheating, lying crook. We just don't do that. Whereas honesty will win our hearts over. So by indicating the third category, Allah mentions only one thing. And the third is akhlaq. You want to be a good person, a good human? Proper belief. Proper rituals, proper akhlaq, the third. And then the fourth one and the final one, Allah mentions that, وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ Today's khutbah was about sabr for those of you that attended. And Allah mentions sabr, sabirin, because sabr is the pinnacle of the internal characteristics of a positive iman. Because iman also deals with how you think of the world and how you think of Allah. And the pinnacle of this is sabr. So your mu'amala with Allah as well is important. What do you think of Allah? How do you act? And Allah mentions the most important, and I mentioned this in the khutbah today, and that is the aspect of sabr. And those who are patient, fil ba'sa'i, when times are tough, wal-darra'i, when calamities, musibas happen, wahin al ba's and during times of war. If you can conquer your emotions, if you can have a positive attitude, if you're patient and you think the best thoughts of Allah, these, Allah says, these four characteristics. So once again, number one is good belief. Number two is proper rituals. Number three is akhlaq, proper interactions with other people. And number four is the internal spirituality. That is, in, maybe you can say ihsan as well. The internal spirituality. If you master these four things, what does Allah say? These are the people, they've lived up to the promise, they've spoken the truth. What is the truth? When they say we are believers, when they say we are Muslims, when they say we are mu'mins, they're the ones telling the truth. And they are the ones who have achieved actual taqwa. So in this verse we learn, 
When it comes to rituals, it's not the outer form that is important. Which direction you face? Two Muslims could face two exact opposite directions in the same city, not knowing which direction is valid. So if two Muslims don't have a compass, and one of them says, Makkah's that way. The other says, no, no, Makkah's that way. What are they going to do? Each one will pray according to their ijtihad. And both of their prayers will be equally rewarded by Allah. ليس البر أن تولوا وجوك القيل المشرق والمغرب. It's not important what direction you pray. You think Mecca is that way, you pray that way. The other person think Mecca that way, pray that way. What is really important? What's inside? Your iman and taqwa, your rituals that you do properly, your akhlaq with other people, and your ihsan and spirituality and attitude with Allah subhanahu wa taala. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make us of those who achieve ultimate bir. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.